T'was the night before Christmas, when all through the land, not a physicist could sleep for they knew what was planned. Their detectors were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The Higgs was quite easy, gravitational waves were a breeze, but spotting Santa, it turns out, requires far greater expertise. For in just one night, he visits over one billion houses. Our question today is how does the universe allow this? Merry Christmas and happy holidays, I'm Dr. Ben Miles, welcome to Spin Up Science. Today, we're looking at our cutting edge understanding of how Saint Nick flies his sleigh around the world delivering presents to all the boys and girls without breaking a sweat or any laws of the universe. It turns out that Santa Claus just might be using the laws of quantum mechanics. If this is true, it helps us answer three really important questions about Santa. One, how does he visit so many houses in a single night? Two, why hasn't anybody ever seen him? And three, how does he enter a house that doesn't have a chimney? There are about two billion people across the world that Santa visits. Obviously, the vast majority of these are children, as most adults are on the naughty list. Let's say on average, there are two children per household. So Santa ultimately visits about a billion houses in a single night. He starts approximately at 9 p.m. North Pole time and ends about 7 a.m. Again, North Pole time. We could argue about time zones here, but Santa likes to keep it simple. So he confines his travel to this 10 hour window. If we assume the houses are evenly distributed across the continents of Earth, which make up about 100 million square kilometers of land mass, we find the average distance between each house Santa must visit is about 300 meters. If Santa had to do that 300 meter trip 1 billion times in 10 hours, he would only have 0.03 milliseconds to travel to each house, deliver a present before setting off to the next house. His reindeer will be traveling around 30 million kilometers per hour, or about 10,000 times faster than a speeding bullet. This would be a stretch even with a sprinkle of Christmas magic. And I've always understood that Santa likes to work hard, but he prefers to work smart. So he's found another way. In the wonderful world of quantum mechanics, objects can be in multiple places at once. This idea is called superposition, and the way you talk about it mathematically is reasonably simple. You just add together all the positions and probabilities of being in any one given position together. These probabilities can ebb and flow over time, and so the superposition of states is called a wave function. To take a Christmas analogy here, you could describe a mince pie that you were eating in a state of eaten and not eaten, with some probability in between. These probabilities probably tend highly towards Eton because hey, it's Christmas and you deserve it. But if we wanted to consider Santa in a quantum state, we could say he was simultaneously visiting 1 billion houses across the world at a single time. If Santa was in a coherent superposition state, then he's actually leaving presents in all the houses simultaneously. So we find that 10 hours is absolutely plenty of time to deliver all those presents. He even has time to feed the reindeer and maybe even eat the mince pies that you left out for him. There is one strange facet of quantum superpositions though, or wave functions, which our earlier mince pie example didn't quite account for as that was just classical superposition, not quantum superposition. Quantum wave functions only work up until the point where you look at, measure, or observe them. As soon as you do that, the wave function collapses into a single state out of all the possibilities. This is actually what happens every Christmas Eve when you leave mince pies out for Santa. While you're tucked up in bed, you can imagine those mince pies as both being in an eaten and a not eaten state. At the beginning of the night, the chance is they are still down there uneaten. But as it gets closer to morning, the chance is they've been eaten. Only however, when you go downstairs to observe them though and take a measurement, do the mince pies collapse into one or the other state. And you wish ultimately that you'd only left out two mince pies rather than three. This also explains why no one has ever seen Santa. If there's an equal chance of him being in all houses at once, when you sneak down to look for him, his wave function collapses and he has to be in one of those houses out of the billion. So it's very unlikely that it will be yours which is a shame, but even Santa has to obey mathematics. Our final question is one that has always puzzled us. How does Santa get inside if there is no chimney and fireplace? Luckily for him and other quantum objects, walls and ceilings aren't major obstacles because of a property called quantum tunneling. When you describe a wave function of say a quantum object in a box, its probability might look something like this. The highest likelihood when you observe it is that it will be in the middle of the box. But if you go to either edge, you notice its position probability doesn't end at the walls. There is a vanishingly small chance that you could measure it outside the box. We know that this happens because physicists have made measurement devices based on this idea called STMs or scanning tunneling microscopes that take advantage of this. They move or scan a very 
small piece of metal very close to charged surfaces, and depending on the distance to the surface, electrons tunnel or jump away from the surface onto the tip. This lets scientists measure really small distances and objects like atoms or the spaces between atoms. So if Santa comes across a house with no chimney, as long as he's patient, there is a chance he will spontaneously tunnel through the wall or the ceiling so that he can deliver presents, a Christmas miracle. And I guess that's a reason why you really don't want to be on the naughty list, because this guy will find you and there's basically no chance you can stop him. This is one of the only instances where it's better not to measure and instead just believe. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.